After another year of planning for and recording this podcast, it's time to reflect. Uh, Today, I reflect on the biggest ideas, insights, and trends that I take from 55 conversations, really 56 conversations I've had on this podcast this year. Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, where we are helping leaders grow personally and professionally to lead more effectively and make a bigger difference for their teams, organizations, and the world. If you're listening to this podcast, you could join us in the future live. And of course, you can't do it for this one, but you can in the future. And if you want to find out when we're going live, who those conversations are with, and be a part of that, you can do that by joining our Facebook or LinkedIn groups. Just go to remarkablepodcast.com slash Facebook or remarkablepodcast.com slash LinkedIn. Or if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll find out when those are coming as well. Lots of ways to be connected with us live. Um, tonight's episode is brought to you by our Remarkable Master of Classes. Pick from 13 important life and leadership skills to help you become more effective, productive, and confident while overcoming some of a leader's toughest challenges. You can learn more and sign up at remarkablemasterclass.com. So normally here's where I would introduce a guest. I'm my own guest tonight. So uh, if you think about what I've said I'm going to do, you might wonder how I went about getting ready to do this. And uh, I I spent a lot of time reflecting on the last 55. As I'm doing this live, it's 55 episodes, but the 56th episode actually comes out tomorrow as I'm doing this live. But for those of you that are listening to the podcast, it will be last week's episode. Uh, I reflected on, thought about uh, what I read and in my preparation for and the conversations I had with these really smart and wise folks. And you know what else I did? I even uh, even took all of the titles from the podcast and asked ChatGPT to give me some reflections or to give me some themes as well. Um, And a year ago, I really couldn't have done that, or maybe I could have, but I wouldn't have known how. So uh, from that reflection, from that pondering, from that thinking, comes what I'm going to share with you in terms of these key ideas. And and I have a number of them that I will share with you. But the thing that I want to, to say first is while I will share these as distinct trends and ideas, like everything in leadership, they are interconnected, intertwined. Etc. So I'm going to suss them out and pull them out a little bit, but I want you to recognize that you're going to see con- connections between them. And I can tell you, if I did this over s- since we started this podcast in the middle of 2016, it wouldn't have be these same things e- every year. I can promise you that. So the first thing that I think showed up over and over, maybe one of the biggest overriding themes of this year's episodes, is culture. You know, the world is changing. The world of work is changing. What we think of as the workplace is changing. And all of those things have an impact on culture, which was reflected in the conversations that I had. Not just the major themes of specific episodes and conversations, but I would say that culture in one way or another showed up in almost every single conversation this year. I think that we are getting smarter, uh, that to, to realize, more of us are realizing that culture uh, is a differentiator, uh, both internally to help us find, uh, attra- attract, and retain the right talent, but to get higher levels of productivity and success and engagement, but also uh, an external factor in terms of how the world and how our marketplace and how our customers and clients see us. Our company culture has an impact on everything that happens both internally and externally. And that showed up over and over throughout the course of the episodes this year. The the second thing on the list, you might immediately first think it seems like it's the same. Uh, But the ideas are ideas around workplace environment and the future of work showed up over and over and and in some cases, I asked guests, so how is this different now? The ideas that you're sharing, how are they different now than they were two, three, four, five pre years ago, pre-pandemic, perhaps? And, and so we talked about that in those cases. But there were many episodes where we talked about 
what's going on in the workplace, the environment, what people are looking for, what people need. And there was certainly episodes where we talked very specifically about what does the future hold for all of that. Now, there is certainly a connection to culture here, but I think it's enough different that I wanted to pull it out and share it with you. But there are a variety of episodes during the course of the year where we talked about these ideas and, and they came up often. The third one, again, somewhat connected, but still different and, and really a theme that I hadn't seen as much the last couple of years as I did this year. And that's the idea of the development of our teams. Uh, we talked a lot about what it makes a great team. We talked about skills. We talked a lot about expectations. What do we expect of our team members to be effective as a collaborative partner with their peers? Uh, but we also talked about talent itself. Again, mentioned that me a minute ago as well, but the idea that the talent that we want to keep, the talent that we want to have? What is it that we're looking for, for our next team members? What is the coaching we need to give to our existing team members to create the teams that we want? So team development was another big theme this year. In, in a world, as I've already said, that is changing a great deal, in a world where what it means to work is changing and how we think about work is changing, that means that we need to think about leading differently. And in 2018, uh, I co-wrote with Wayne Jermel the book, The Long Distance Leader. And in The Long Distance Leader, we talked about rule number one being think leadership first, location second, that it is about leadership more than the other context. And yet what we need from leaders is not the same. And what we expect of leaders isn't the same that we expected when I first joined the workplace in the 80s. And what was successful then is different than what was is successful now. And while not everything about leadership has changed, the focus, the intent, and the most critical factors have changed. Leadership is still about moving people towards valuable outcomes. It's still about reaching valuable outcomes with and through others. But how we do that is changing. And there was a lot of conversation on the podcast this year about what does it mean to lead now? What are the new views that we need to have about leadership? Maybe some new paradigms and perspectives that will help us lead more effectively in this changing world. And I fully expect, having already recorded the first uh, six or seven podcasts for next year, I know that this is a theme that will continue into the new year. Uh, the, the next one is a is what you might call a harder leadership skill that is also, I think, become more important now in, as, as people are trying to deal with the uncertainty in the world, but also as we've started gotten through a pandemic and things are starting to settle back into like, where are we really trying to go? What is our strategic direction? Uh, what are we expecting from leaders in terms of strategic thinking? A number of episodes specifically uh, about strategy and strategic thinking. And in, even in work with our clients this year, I'm finding sort of a renewed focus, interest, and and desire for leaders at lower levels to have more uh, skill uh, around being strategic thinkers. So there was a lot of conversation this year about strategic thinking. Uh, and, and in the ones that are following now, it's a little bit of a shift. So we've talked about skills related to our role as a leader, culture, work at place environment, uh, expectations, team development, uh, what is the view or what does it mean to be successful as a leader today and strategic thinking? These are all things that uh, us with our leader hat firmly on. But the ones that, that I still want to share with you uh, about uh, are, are really more personal development in nature. And as long as I've been doing this podcast, we've had, we've had episodes about sort of us as a leader and us as a human. I have long said that to be a better leader is to become a better human. And so uh, we've long had uh, all sorts of uh, experts talk about skills that we can apply, not just as a leader, but in all parts of our life. And that continued this year, and I'm sure will continue into the future. But what's different about the kinds of things that showed up this year, I think is really 
telling. And I want to actually talk about some specific episodes in, in relationship to that. But first, one of those areas that I guess I could have talked about before I got to personal development, but yet it really truly is a skill that we can apply in all parts of our life is empathy. The idea of being empathetic as a leader, the idea of bringing our empathy, bringing our heart uh, to the workplace as a leader uh, showed up over and over this year, multiple episodes, very much specifically about empathy. So we can talk about that as a skill, a human skill. It's also a leadership skill. But there are a number of others that were, were specific episodes showed up. Like when I think about personal development in past years, I know that we've done a number of episodes about, say, networking or about learning, or and I could go right on down the list. And all of those are super important. But some of the things that we talked about this year, some of the things our experts are writing about and sharing about are different than they would have been two, three, four, five years ago. I'll just put some of them up there. This, this first one, and I'm, I'm going to share with you in a few minutes the most uh, listened to episodes of the year. Um, but this first one is the most listened to episode of the year as a bit of a preview. Uh, and it's personal development. And it's different. It's about being deliberately calm. How can we be calmer? How can we uh, beat or overcome the stressors and the burnout? How can we intentionally and deliberately be calmer so we can make better, more informed decisions? Yeah, we did a whole episode on this idea uh, with Aaron Deschmet about being deliberately calm. Is it a leadership skill? Of course it is. And it's certainly, uh, yeah, there, Kristen is, is coming back and saying that empathy is a true leadership skill. It, it truly is. And certainly, uh, when we think about being calm, we're not going to be able to be very empathetic if we can't be calm. And there's another topic. Uh, one of my favorite guests who's been with me before, we did an episode several years ago about uh, listening. And this year she was on to talk about rest, the radical power of rest, episode 398. Um, and, and it was a it was a powerful episode where we talked about the need for rest. It's it's interesting to me that a lot of times after I've had one of these conversations, not surprisingly, then those ideas keep coming back, floating up. I hear other things uh, in the world. One of the things that's true about leaders now, the, more true than, than I can ever remember in my lifetime, is that there are leaders talking about how much sleep they get and bragging about getting more rather than bragging about how little they need. One of the finest basketball players ever, certainly of our lifetime, and certainly in the NBA now is LeBron James. And you probably have at least heard of LeBron. And he famously gets at least not eight, nine, 10 hours of sleep a night. Rest. The power of rest to restore us, the power of rest to help us be more effective, the power of rest for us as humans and as leaders. We spent an entire episode talking about that. And more recently, in episode 409, in fact, it's actually next week's episode. So if you're with me live right now, you can go find it in the, in the on YouTube. But if you're listening on the podcast, it was last week's episode, uh, episode 409, where we talked about the ability to look, the ability to be more observant, to do it deliberately, to overcome the distractions in our world, uh, a really powerful idea. Another recent episode that I loved about one of these, what we could call mega skills, is one on confidence. Damon, hello, Damon. Damon says, self-care is so important to be effective, present leaders. And Damon, you're right. And so think about those things we've just talked about, being calm, being rested. These things both weigh in and play in to our ability to take care of ourselves. When we do those things, when we aren't burnt out, when we are when we ha we are taking care of ourselves, we have the chance to be more confident. And in an episode uh, about a, Lisa Sun's uh, book called Gravitas, we talked about ways to build confidence, different types of confidence, incredibly valuable leadership skill that I've written about for years as being underappreciated. 
and we spent time talking about that. There, there's two more in this whole area of personal development, and I'm going to tell you about these two, then tie them all back together for you. Uh, episode 373, we talked about micro stress. We talked about the fact that stress can eat at us in a hundred little ways. It's not just the big events that cause us stress, but hundreds of little things, little nips, little bites, all of those things um, can play, take a toll. And, and, and again, I think that if we think back to rest and calm and tie those together with this. So in this episode, we talked about the idea of micro stressors as well as how to uh, overcome their impact or, or, or deflate. Uh, def deflect the impact that they have on our lives. And then the last one, another one of the top episodes of the year was about resilience. Now I put this one last, not because it's less important, uh, but for two reasons. One is that we've talked about resilience on the show many times over the years, have had other episodes that were specifically about resilience. One of the most downloaded episodes ever in the history of the podcast is about resilience, but we had another one this year. Uh, and, and it's a, uh, an, and specifically, the episode was called Resilience Through Crisis. I, I put it last on this list because if you think back to all of the, the items I've just shared, empathy, calm, rest, observation, confidence, micro stress, that if we can, if we can, as we frame all of those, those, if we are more calm, Will we be more resilient? Yes. If we are better at observing what's going on around us, will we be more resilient? Yes. If we get more rest, will we be more resilient? Yes. If we know how to deal with, understand and deal with micro stressors, will we be more resilient? Yes. And if we're more confident, will we, will we be more resilient? Yes. So when I look at that list of decidedly soft skills, things that in some cases we would never have talked about, in the workplace or on a podcast three, four, five, six years ago. I think it's a positive sign. And it's an exciting thing as I look back on the year that we've talked about these kinds of important ideas on the podcast. And if you're just getting started with us, then certainly I hope that you'll go back and find some of these. Um, uh, going back to a couple of comments from the folks that are with us live. Kristen says, leaders need to recognize the work life cycle is vital for both managing to be successful and functional to your folks. It's exactly right. It's this idea of self care. It's really important. And we've got another person saying that Ukrainians are role models of resilience these days. So we can think about that and say that we wouldn't have been having that conversation uh, a year ago in the way that we're having it now. And it's certainly not in an ongoing struggle and challenge that, that our our friends and uh, in, in Ukraine are facing. So uh, as I've looked back on the year and as I prepared to do this short episode, I got, I was encouraged. I, I was excited that we were able to bring some things to you as listeners and viewers that are really important. And I believe that if we address things like calm and rest and observation and confidence and empathy, we will be coming. We will be becoming, though, that new view of leadership that is needed in our world that can help us make a bigger difference for our teams, our organizations in the world, which is our stated goal for this podcast. So I hope that all of that sort of comes together and makes some sense for you. I hope that it encourages you to go maybe go back and find, listen to some of these episodes. I will tell you this. What I want to do now is share with you a, a countdown of the top seven most uh, listen, downloaded episodes, viewed and listened to episodes of the year. And I can tell you that in the show notes on the podcast, on remarkablepodcast.com or in your show notes, we will have this list. So you can, you don't have to furiously write them down. Uh, you can know that you can go to remarkablepodcast.com, find this episode, and you can find this list. But these are the most downloaded, listened to, um, consumed episodes of the year. And, and here they are um, in descending order from seven to one. Um, and, and you will hear that some of the things we just talked about are in these episodes. But, it, but this also says that even though I've shared with you overall trends, there are specific episodes that, that aren't necessarily in those trends directly that are also extremely valuable and useful to you. So number seven, uh, creating meaningful change with Mike Morrison, episode 359. Uh, next, 
uh, really kind of an outlier. Um, Coco Brown came on with me and we talked about your path to the boardroom. As leaders, do we want to, what does it look like for us to try to be on boards, serve on boards, et cetera? Uh, that's the sixth most downloaded episode of the year, your path to the boardroom with Coco, Coco Brown. Next, one we just talked about, episode 356, Resilience Through Beyond Crisis with Lil Lynn Perry Wooten. Excellent uh, episode. Uh, Gabriella Kellerman in episode 363 joined me to talk about thriving at work, which talked about a number of the things that we've talked about here in these some of these very specific episodes. The third most um, consumed episode of the year is Making Better Choices with Jim Lair and she, Dr. Shelia, Sheila Olson Walker. Uh, this is an episode about how we make decisions and how to make better decisions, understanding some of our biases in, in the decision-making process, a powerful episode for sure. The second most downloaded was one of the very first of the year. And so as probably doesn't surprise you that many of these are earlier in the year because they've had more time to be out in the world. So the list is always sort of uh, weighted higher at the beginning of the year. Uh, and this one, number the most, the number two most listened to episode is was titled "The Seismic Shift in Leadership" with Dr. Michelle Johnson. One of those episodes about the new view of leadership. What does it mean to lead? How do we need to think about leadership different than we have in the past? And as I already mentioned, the number one most downloaded episode of the year, episode three sixty two, uh, "Creating Deliberate Calm" with Aaron Desmet. So that's the list. We will have those on. Um, remarkablepodcast.com and the show notes, wherever you're listening to your podcasts, we'll have that list so you can go back and get those um, uh, at your leisure. And so if you're just joining us, if this is, if you're early in your time with us on the podcast, I hope that this episode does a couple of things for you. One of the things I hope it does is gives you a higher level perspective of sort of what is being talked about, thought about, and written about, about leadership, and that maybe these, these bigger ideas are useful for you as you continue to think about your own leadership journey. But secondarily, I certainly hope that it gives you some thought to say, hey, I want, I want to go back and listen to that episode on rest or observation or confidence, etc. Maybe this is your chance to go back and, and dip into some uh, past episodes that might help you in your own journey. And so, um, again, that list will be uh, on remarkablepodcast.com for the show notes for this episode. And certainly, wherever you're watching or listening, you can go back and see all of the episodes in the archive, find what you might want, what might make sense to you. The other thing is, anytime you listen to or watch an episode, the show notes will tell you other related um, episodes. Hey, if you like this, you might enjoy these others. So lots of ways to sort of help you uh, hone in on what might be most valuable for you. Um, every time that I bring uh, uh, an expert on, I ask them this question. I ask them what they're reading. So I went back through all of the things that they said they were reading this year, uh, and I found some things that were mentioned by more than one person. So I thought it made sense that I should share that list with you as well. And two of the items on this list are were books by other people that had been on the podcast this year. So I'm going to share with you two, four, six books. We will have these for you in the show notes as well. But I thought you might find this list interesting as well. Um, for most of my life, when I've met people I admired or looked up to, or even when I just had the chance to ask people, I would ask them this question, what are you reading? Which is what I've now asked over 400 guests on this show. And among those from this year, here are some books that were mentioned more than once. First, which happens to be the number one best-selling business book of this year and for the last several years, is Atomic Habits by James Clear. So if it's the number one best-selling book, not surprising that it would be noticed and mentioned. It was mentioned four times this year, almost 10% of the time, probably 8% of the time. Um, David Berkus's new book, Best Team Ever, was mentioned, and he was on the podcast, episode 397. Amy Edmondson's brand new book, that just came out in the last few weeks has already been mentioned twice. 
uh, it's a book called Right Kind of Wrong, and it's a book that I'm hoping to read during the holidays myself, Right Kind of Wrong, Amy Edmondson's brand new book. Uh, the book by uh, Yuval uh, Harari, I believe I'm saying that correctly, called Sapiens. It's a book about the human race. Uh, the book is called Sapiens. It's been uh, mentioned twice this year, and and so you might find that interesting. Ryan Holiday's book on Stoicism, uh, Obstacles, uh, obst The Obstacle is the Way, uh, was mentioned a couple of times, and, and then one more that was mentioned a couple of times this year, also an episode. Uh, the My guests, Manette Norman and Carolyn Helbig, wrote a fabulous book about psychological safety, uh, called the Psychological Safety Playbook. It was mentioned twice. The episode where they talked with me was episode 381. So that's a short list on the remarkablepodcast.com site for this episode and in the show notes, wherever you're getting this, I will have that list of those books as well as those uh, most downloaded episodes as of the recording of this episode. I have all that for you as a resource. I hope that you found this useful. Now, the I'm going to close this episode the way I close every episode of the show, and it is this. Now what? What are you going to do with what you just learned? What insight did you just take from what I share that leads you to take some action? That might be to read a book or listen to an episode, certainly. But there may be something else that I said or or or, or something that came out of what I said that leads you to an insight or an idea that leads you to action. Because ultimately the question of now what is a question of application and action. And it's my hope, as with every episode, that you leave here with, I, with not just ideas, information, and not just inspiration, but the choice to act. And so I hope that you will do that after this episode like all the rest. Now I can tell you, uh, as we sit here, that I've already recorded, as I said, a number of episodes for 2023 and a number of others on the docket to be recorded. Three more before the calendar turns to 2024 will be recorded. And we'll have uh, all of January, all of February, and part of March already recorded. So I can tell you with certainty two things. Number one, that if you come back next week, there'll be another episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. But also that if this year's episodes were great, next year's will be as well, because some of them are already in the can and they are fantastic. I hope that you will come on this journey with me of learning. I, I hope to continue to be your uh, a sage uh, to help you, a facilitator to help you, and someone that can inspire you in your path to becoming a more remarkable leader. Thanks for joining me. And we'll be back next week with another episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast.